Hello and welcome everyone. In the last video we talked about three misconceptions by a scholar of religion regarding evolution. Stay tuned as we present two more of his arguments to refute evolution and how you can respond to those arguments to show that evolution is true. For more about getting to the truth about science, religion, or both, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell button so you can be notified when I post new videos. Please stay tuned to the end of this video and I'll have a PDF for you that you can download with some of the most common arguments that people use to disprove evolution and the responses to those arguments. My name is Dr. Suhaila Smith from RiseOfTruth.com. You're here for the truth, so let's press on and seek it. We already responded to three claims by the scholar. The first one was that abiogenesis and Darwin's theory of natural selection were the same. Number two, organisms or organs suddenly appear. Number three, genetics disproves evolution. All these claims were refuted with scientific evidence. You can watch part one of this series to see how these arguments were refuted. Okay, number four, mistaking non-heritable traits for heritable ones. What does this mean? Well, let's look at another quote from the scholar. He said, the Jews and the Muslims after them have been circumcising their sons for centuries, but this has not led to any of their children being born circumcised. The more science advances, the more this theory is proven wrong. What he is saying here is that if evolution is true, circumcision should result in children being born circumcised since circumcision has been performed for generations. So children should be born that way. I guess it's kind of like saying, since girls have been piercing their ears for years, they should be born with pierced ears. But the thing is, is that evolution occurs when an organism has an advantageous genetic trait. So Ashkar's reference to circumcision doesn't have anything to do with evolution. Circumcision isn't a genetic trait, but rather a surgical procedure that certain groups habitually perform. Have you ever heard an argument against Darwin's theory of natural selection or the theory of evolution like this before? Please tell me in the comments below. Misconception number five, apes change into humans. Again, quoting the scholar, this theory is not supported by reality. If this theory were true, we would see many animals and people coming into existence through evolution, not only through reproduction, even if evolution needs a long time, this does not mean that we would not see apes changing into men, one group after another. So here, Ashkar is saying that we should see apes changing into humans if evolution is true. He thinks evolution states that humans evolved from the present day great apes. But the truth is, with humans and the present day great apes, one didn't turn into the other, though they do share a common ancestor. So this is his misunderstanding of evolution, demanding that present day apes evolve into humans because he imagines that evolution states humans evolved from the present day great apes in the past, whereas humans and present day apes diverged millions of years ago. This means that present day great apes and humans have a common ancestor, but they split into two different lineages. That's why it's scientifically impossible for a present day ape to evolve into a human, since apes took a different evolutionary path than humans did millions of years ago. Now, after this branching of the human lineage and the present day apes from their common ancestor, chimpanzees split from this lineage of humans and the human lineage continued. All members of the human lineage evolved into distinct species, and the only one remaining today is the present day human. Monkeys and present day apes never turned into humans, but it's clear based on the scientific evidence that has accumulated until now that all organisms are related. Now you have five examples of arguments that people who want to disprove evolution use and how you can respond to those arguments. And if you like this video, please tell me by liking it below, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. Leave a comment if you found this video helpful and let me know what helped you the most. 
I look forward to your feedback and hearing what you have to say and responding to your comments. And if you want to join a community of people just like you who are curious and want to know the truth, then please join our Facebook group, Rise of Truth, where we discuss topics just like this on our journey of seeking the absolute. Remember to download your free PDF for even more arguments against evolution and the responses to those arguments. We look forward to having you there with us and thank you for joining us.